Welcome everybody back to the channel. <laughs> Not everybody's coming back, Seth. So. Welcome everybody to the channel on this episode, part four, I believe, of the Can-Am build. I'm going to be making a custom dash. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I've got my power supply here. This is the 12 volt outlet that I'm not gonna be using because the prong has broken off there anyway. So I've also located the three sensors that used to tell the factory speedometer what gear is what. So all I need to do, hook up my multimeter to the power supply and figure out which one is which from whatever gear I am in. So right here, I am in neutral. Neutral is the middle. If you don't believe me, neutral is the middle. I've got my positive hooked up to my 12 volts, and then I will take my ground and complete the circuit. So that one is not neutral. We'll move it to this one. That one is also not neutral. We'll go down here to this one. This must be neutral. Well, we don't have exactly 12 volts, but it is safe to say that that one is neutral. Just to make sure, we will put this thing in reverse on the same one. Nada, okay? So, we'll move to this one. There you go, that's reverse. And then this one must be park, but to confirm, There you go, park, reverse, neutral. Now I know it may be hard to see, but right there is the sensor for the four wheel drive system. And it works pretty much the same, pins line up and it creates a ground. So I'm gonna be doing that with the four wheel drive as well. So I'll have four dummy lights in total. Okay, instead of running my own wires from the sensors all the way up to the cluster, I would like to utilize the factory wires. Come down here right where it comes out of the case this is the plug that connects to those wires and unfortunately they are different colors <laughs> but i think i can figure out which is which from looking at the back i'm going to disconnect this plug and then i will come up to the speedometer and then i can test and make sure which ones are which by ohm testing the resistance making sure i've got the correct wire when I do find what wires that I need, I can just cut the rest of this crap off because I do not need it. Now in a previous episode, I have cut out a little piece of metal and removed the entire old speedometer. I didn't really like the fact that there was just a blank disc, although that would have worked. I'm gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna put some dummy lights in it. Let's get to it. Look at that. I think that looks good. Although I think this kind of looks like it, a little kid drew it. I just wanted something in that space. I thought it would look weird without it. So I attempted my Dremel scales and you can kind of see there's some spots where it got away from me a little bit, but you know what? I think it's okay. Let me know if you guys like that. Do you guys like that? Do you think it looks like a little kid drew it? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this black, sand it back down. So I want these letters and stuff to stand out and do something else while it's drying. So my original plan was to use the uh, 12 volt plug to the outlet and the only problem with that is I realized that with the key off, it's on. It's always putting out voltage. So I can't do that. The thing I can do is go through these old speedometer wires and see which one has power when the key is on. It's probably about time I clean this key too. Every time you turn it, there's off and then there's on with the lights and then there's on. So off, lights, on. Every time you put it in the 
on position doesn't always work so easiest way is just to take it apart see how messed up it is and all i did was uh take a little flathead and get behind this here pop that open and then it releases those clips here and then uh you can see it's pretty gumped up so pretty nasty i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that all right check her out now blokes still uh, a little corroded a little rust in there but that cleaned up pretty well got all the contacts uh free and open and ready to accept the prongs so now if i'm cleaning anything this is what i'm freaking using la is totally awesome it's totally awesome it's about the only thing that i use i detail my cars with it it is in my ultrasonic cleaner right over there i wash my quads with it spray it on rinse it off yeah i pretty much use it for everything so if you guys haven't tried this stuff yet I'll, I'll link it down in the description you down in this down in this <coughs> down in the description description i'll link this stuff down in the description for you guys if you want to check it out a little bit of dielectric grease keep that all in there left me a little art signature on the back of this let's go ahead and get this glued in here so we can finally hook everything up All right, guys, there it is all installed. Now, I haven't melted these uh, uh, heat shrinks yet just because I want to make sure it works. I guess let's turn the key and see if it works. Oh, four-wheel drive is on too. Dude, those are freaking bright, so. Uh, is it stuck in four? It might just be stuck in four, but. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah! Check that shit out. Um, something's going on here. Huh. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that one. That blue light is on, but that's only because it's grounded to the engine. If the four wheel drive does kick on, it brightens up. I don't really know what to do about that. Uh, does anyone know? So this is the sensor that tells that light when the four wheel drive is on. Um, metal comes in here and goes boop, connects to it and it grounds out. So um, it seems to be insulated with some kind of insulator. So I don't know why it is still producing current through there unless this whole piece is bad. So I guess I'm gonna order a new one and see if that works. I don't know why else it would be doing that. Cause I mean, from the factory, if it did that, it would show it was in four wheel drive all the time. So this thing has gotta be bad somehow. So I guess I'll try my luck. And I mean, this cannot be a, an expensive part. So until then, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing back in and I'm gonna let Seth rip this thing up on his channel well i did look this part up because i was curious to how much it would be and to see if it was even available well the little fucker is 25 dollars so i added it to my cart click checkout and this little fucker is on back order so i might just deal with how it is i don't know i'm not quite sure how this thing works but now it's working correctly so four wheel drive on <laughs> four wheel drive off oh of course, when the video is on, it doesn't work. I just had this thing working. I literally have no idea what's going on. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, so I've got no idea what's going on. Um, maybe it needs to be driven. So I'm gonna drive it on my other channel. Go check that out. And uh, that's pretty much it for here. Um, if there is gonna be another upload, it's going to be about a seat 
These things are hard to find. It's like freaking gold mining. All I have is this pan. Sorry. There are a couple on eBay, but they're like 300 plus dollars and that is not something I want to spend. I did find a couple, well, no, I found one on Marketplace and I'm having a hell of a time trying to reach out to the guy and get a shipping price, but he only wants 50 bucks for it, which is way better than 300, so. But if I cannot find one, I'm going to think of an idea on how to make my own foam and uh, just buy a seat cover for it, so. Stick around for that. Thanks every single one of you guys for watching. I'll catch you later.